A Halloween to Remember by Slashed Train. My friends and I decided to go trick-or-treating this year. We were teenagers that wanted some candy and to TP houses, honestly. We lived in a massive neighborhood, so there was a lot to go around. After two hours of going around the streets, egging and TPing houses, and a very lucky escape from the police, we were ready to end the night. We all stopped at a dark street. Should we go? One of my friends asked. Okay, one more street, another friend replied. I stared down the dark street, unable to see its end. There was something odd about this street, like it didn't belong. The houses were completely different from the other ones in the neighborhood. They looked abandoned, and there were no lights either in the street or the houses. I got this bad feeling about this, guys, I said. Don't be a pussy, David. We're just gonna egg some houses and leave. If they call the cops again, we'll sneak out of here. The place is freaking pitch black, my friend replied. We walked down the cold black street, joking around and telling ghost stories, as I just couldn't help feeling watched. Houses looked very different, like I said. They didn't look stable. I knew something was up. I just knew it. The light from the other street began to become dimmer and dimmer. Okay, here. We took a bag full of eggs and toilet paper. We were cursing and having fun. Almost forgot to be worried. Crack. A loud noise echoed in the street. What was that? I asked. Everybody hide now, my friends yelled. I saw all my friends scramble around the block. I hid behind a rusty trash can, looking over the edge. I couldn't see anything because it was so dark. I could only see a blue outline of the houses. I took out my phone for some light. No signal at all on my cell phone. Didn't they build over a dozen cell phone towers all over the area? I shined my light toward the street. Crack. This time it was even louder. I pulled back and looked over again. All of my friends were there, standing in the middle of the street. So, what do you think that was? I questioned, walking toward them. They didn't respond. Hello? There is something about your soul I cannot take, but I'll find a way, they all said at the same time. What the fuck? They all charged toward me. I ran and ran. The darkness seemed to continue on forever. I didn't hear them chasing after me, but I didn't stop. I kept looking for a source of light, or just anybody. I slammed my face into a wall. I got up to see a giant skyscraper outlined in blue, and a plenty fill of them. It was a city without light. I stood there completely shocked. A lot of questions flew into my mind. What just happened? Where am I? Can I get back? These questions flooded my mind. A loud growl roared behind me. I turned around to see a wolf-like creature blended into the darkness. Shit, I whispered to myself. I stood there, looking at the creature. I regret my decision after that. I ran as fast as I could hearing the creature's paws hitting the concrete. I stopped in an alley. I think I'm okay, I said to myself. You're far from okay. A 
A similar voice responded. I turned around to see an army of people standing. I tried to run, but another group blocked the other side of the alley. A tall man stood in front. He was dressed in black and was wearing a hoodie that blocked his face. What do you want from me? I yelled. I want your soul, like I did with all your little friends here. I used the round to capture as many souls as I want. You bastard, I yelled back. You're different. Your soul is special and very hard to get. And what makes it harder is that you're protected. But no soul is strong enough to keep me out. Get ready to become my puppet. Then they closed in on me. I felt like this was the end, and I was going to be made his puppet, and I couldn't do anything about it. A stereotypical light shone down on me. Not him again, the tall man said. I woke up in my bed with a bag of candy and leftover eggs from last night. I looked at my digital clock and it read 7 a.m., 11 1 11. I laid there for a while and wondered if it was all a dream. Whatever happened, I'm safe now. I got up to get ready for school and saw a sticky note on my door saying, oh, I haven't forgotten about you yet. Halloween to Regret by Slashed Train It's hard to believe a year has passed since the incident. I laid there on my bed, trying to get rid of the memories of that unfortunate night. But no matter how hard I try, I can't repress the events of that night. Halloween again, I said quietly to myself. I got up from my bed and headed toward the kitchen. Today, I wasn't going to school due to the special circumstances. I ate my breakfast and made no conversation with my family. They just glared at me the whole time. So, it's a nice day, perfect weather, my mom said. I just looked at her and left the kitchen. I went back to my room and sat there at my desk, staring at the clock. Silence. I miss my friends, and not a day goes by that I haven't thought about them. The police never found a trace of them after that night, and obviously they didn't believe a single word of what I said. Typical cops, I thought in my head. I kept the sticky note I received that night after the box in my closet. Should I? I questioned myself. I went to my closet and I grabbed the box and placed it on my desk. All right, it's time, I said to myself. I opened the box to find the sticky note was no longer there. No, this can't be right. I started to panic. I searched my room from top to bottom to find the note, but there was no luck. Running out of options, I stormed out of my room and went back to the kitchen. Where is the note? I demanded. What note? My mom replied. The note that was in this fucking box, I yelled with rage. We don't know what you're talking about. We don't know about any note, my sister said. Lies, I yelled back. 
calm down, David, my older brother said. I stormed out of the living room and headed into the garage. I grabbed my bike and set off into the street. I don't know what I accomplished doing this, but I needed to leave. I pedaled my way down the streets and through traffic until I reached the cemetery. I left my bike on the grass and walked down the numerous rows of graves. I reached my friend's graves. Who did this? I whispered. I stood there in silence and dread. Remembering all the good times of my fallen friends, a tear rolled down my cheek. It's scary how life can take the things and people you love from you in a matter of seconds. My friends aren't dead, though. They're trapped by that monster. I spent a whole year living in fear. I've done everything I can to keep him away. Rituals, sacrifices, spells, everything. I'd hoped this was over and I could live on with my life. I was about to leave until I noticed something on one of the gravestones. It was a sticky note. I leaned down and took it, and it said, I haven't forgotten about you. I froze. How did the sticky note get there? Unless... I dropped the note and began sprinting toward my bike. Before I reached my bike, a black, tall figure appeared in front of me. What's the hurry? We're just getting started, he said. Everything faded to black. I woke up tied to a chair in a large concrete chamber with only a light from the ceiling and a metal door. The metal door opened, and the hooded man walked in. Told you I haven't forgotten about you, the hooded man remarked. I felt too weak to talk. All my energy had been sucked out of me. I just glared at him. Your protection is gone. I'm going to have fun with you tonight. Let's begin, shall we? He brought in a cart filled with various torture devices. He took out a sharp knife and jammed it into my chest cavity. I yelled at the top of my lungs as blood gushed out of my body. Shut up, he said aggressively as he grabbed my tongue and cut it off with his knife. I felt the blood gushing out of my mouth. I tried to get away until he ripped open my torso and violently stabbed my organs. Do you know how much trouble you caused me? How a simple human escaped from my grasp? He raged as he began tearing apart my organs. He grabbed my intestines and started choking me with them. I gasped for air. Everything started to fade out. He let go of me and walked to the cart. He grabbed a dull hacksaw from the cart and began cutting off my limbs. I felt it rip through my muscles. The pain was nothing I had ever felt before. I kept yelling and resisting, hoping someone or something would save me, but I guess my luck has run out. The hooded man grabbed my arm and tore it out of my body. I couldn't take it anymore. I shut my eyes. I woke back up on the chair. My body was restored to normal. I heard a laugh from the dark corner. (laughs) We are just getting started. The hooded man smirked. The metal door opened and I saw my family walk into the room. They had no expression on their faces. No, I said in disbelief. You should have seen the look in their eyes. He laughed. 
My family, gone. My worst fears became a reality. Every nightmare, fear and doubt. The past year I lived in mortal terror for my life and my family, wondering when he'll strike. <sighs> Ended up happening anyway. My fate was doomed from the start. He tortured me for hours on end, not sparing me any tool or method. I could do nothing but sit there. After a couple of hours, he stopped and said, Now it's time for you to become my puppet, you pest. He stuck his whole hand into my chest. I felt my very being being torn out of me my very soul being torn to shreds. I began fighting back with all my might. No, he was not taking me. What? No, this can't be. It's impossible. He said in shock as I tore his soul out of his body. <laughs> I control him now. I felt the power of a thousand souls coursing through my veins. I could now liberate all the souls of the innocent people that had fallen victim to the hooded man. Or become stronger. <laughs> it is Halloween night, and I made my decision. Time to collect souls. <laughs>